Welcome to Club Comfort Zone. Come on in. Nothing happens here. Nothing, nothing. Jack shit happens here in Club Comfort Zone. Just so you know, you're gonna come in and you're not gonna grow and nothing cool is gonna happen to you. No opportunities are gonna come your way and you're pretty much just gonna stay the same. And when you leave Club Comfort Zone, you're just gonna leave with a pretty nasty hangover. That's it. Hi, it's Jen. I used to spend a lot of time in the comfort zone. I loved the comfort zone. In fact, I was so comfortable that I was like, I'm good here, I'm good. And I spent years and years in club comfort zone. Nothing happened there. Everything was good. I had a good business. I had my own little apartment in New York City. I made good money, but there was a feeling inside of my gut that kept coming up. And that feeling was like this like weird, like tingly sensation and it would go into my hands and this voice would come in the back of my mind and it would say, you're not there yet, Jen. There's something more. If you've ever felt that or heard that voice or felt that feeling that there's something more for you, that this isn't it, tell me in the comments of this video. I wanna see, I wanna hear from you because I felt that every single day. But I was so scared to leave the comfort zone to get out there and be a little uncertain and feel that fear and have to feel the fear of potentially failing that I just stayed in good. I was like, good is good enough even though that feeling was calling me. Finally, that feeling got so strong that I couldn't just be good anymore, that I had to go for it or I was gonna regret it for the rest of my life. So I started to dip my toe outside of the comfort zone. I started to practice getting a little bit uncomfortable. And I will give you an example of what I started to do. I had never in my life done a Facebook Live for my business to talk about my business, ever. In fact, even though I'm an actress and I've been on camera my entire life and I've performed in front of thousands and thousands and thousands of people, going live on Facebook or Instagram and talking about my new business was terrifying. I sat there for about an hour debating on if I was gonna press go. This was miles outside of the comfort zone for me, okay? I'm just telling you to like dip your toe. Going live on Facebook was a mile away, but I was like, I have to talk about what I do. I have to get my message out there or nothing is going to change. I'm not gonna be able to impact people on a bigger level. I'm never going to grow. I just kept saying that. I just kept saying that. So then I press go live and I did it. And guess what? My first Facebook live ever, it was terrible. It sucked. It was absolutely horrible. But when I was done and I got to the other side, I realized, oh, that was hard, but that wasn't that bad. And you know what? I'm really proud of myself. And in that moment, I became more confident because the next time that I went to go do a Facebook Live, it was still scary, but it wasn't even close to as scary as the first time. And that is how it works. Confidence comes from consistently sticking with the commitments you make with yourself. If I didn't stick with that commitment of doing that Facebook Live, I probably never would have done one and I wouldn't be standing here talking to you on camera right now. I had to do it again and again and again and again and again to become the person that I am talking to you, being on camera, being able to go live all the time. That's how it works. But you have to be able to push yourself to take that scary action step first. You have to be able to push yourself outside of the comfort zone in order to create that confidence over time. I am going to give you four steps to create more confidence by stepping outside of your comfort zone. You ready for it? Step one, reconnect to you. And what do I mean by that? You're like, Jen, I'm already connected to me. I am me, I know who I am. When we are born, when we are little kids, we are born with confidence. We are born that way, right? We cry for what we want. We wear princess outfits or superhero costumes to the grocery store. We, we ask for things. We wanna give people hugs. When I was a little girl, like I let my belly hang out everywhere. Like I had messy hair. I, I wanted to dress like a boy and I wanted to be Peter Pan. Like we, we and I didn't care talking about that because I didn't care what anybody thought. Somewhere along the way, we get conditioned to feel like we need to be somebody that we're not. We need to look like somebody that we're not. We need to talk like somebody that we're not in order to be more presentable, right? Our parents are always telling you, have manners, don't talk like that, right? Or dress a certain way or be a certain way or look a certain way so that you can fit in, so that you can feel accepted. Because as human beings, we want to feel accepted and loved. So it's very easy, especially in middle school, that's where it happened for me, where you see the cool kids and you want to do everything that you can to fit in with the cool kids. Before I knew it, I had completely lost that loud, outgoing, unapologetic little girl, and I became very insecure and lost a lot of my confidence. 
So when I say step one is to reconnect to you, you want to reconnect to that little boy or that little girl, that little person, because that little person has all of the confidence that you need now and that little person still lives inside of you. The fastest way that I connect to little Jen or like real Jen, I like to call her real Jen. So if you're listening, what's up? Like real Sally, real Tom, real Dave, real Bob. Let's connect to them. And the way that I do that is kind of unconventional. I'm gonna give you a really cool tool. I'll go for a walk and I put on my headphones and I will put on a song that I would listen to as a little kid. For me, it's either like Little Mermaid or Annie or The Wizard of Oz. And I will literally walk around listening to songs that I played as a little kid. And music is this crazy thing that can tap us back into that place. You guys know when you hear a song, maybe you hear the same song that played when you danced at your wedding. It brings you back to that moment. And before I know it, I'm actually feeling that little girl that loved singing and dancing to Under the Sea from Little Mermaid. And I'm remembering her and I'm connecting with her. And you can go even a step further as you walk to that music and you can talk to your little self and say, hey, I know that you felt for a long time that you needed to be or act a certain way or do certain things to be loved and accepted, but I love you just as you are. And I wanna invite you to come along this journey for me and we can do this together. And the more that you can connect with who you really are, the more you're going to realize what you really want and the more confidence you're going to have in being exactly you. And that's going to attract everything that you want and it's going to empower you to go do the next steps that I'm about to tell you to get outside the comfort zone and create more confidence. So let's move on to step number two. Step number two is to connect to future you. Hmm. Or what I like to call you 2.0. We just connected with real Jen or real Bob or real Sarah or real Sally or real Joe or real Dan. And now we're going to connect to future you. And future you or you 2.0 is the version of you that has created everything that you want and more. That is super confident, super swaggy, got it all going on and has that perfect life that you envision. Think about who that person is. Feel that in your gut, like what, what that person would feel like, how they would stand, how they would act. Because if you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, you don't have to know necessarily how you're gonna get there, but if you can't have, be clear on where you're going, then you definitely can't get there. So I want you to connect with that version of you that is unbelievably confident, that has everything that they want. And how do you do that? Well, I like to do some stream of conscious journaling. So what I do when I connect to Gen 2.0 or future Gen is I just take a moment to envision if magical fairy is coming down, tapping me on the head and saying, Jen, you can have absolutely everything that you want. You have the perfect life. You have succeeded in everything that you tried and you are just living the dream. What does it look like from the moment that you wake up to the moment that you go to bed? And I do some stream of conscious writing, meaning writing without thinking. What does my life look like from the second that I wake up in the morning? So where am I waking up? How do I feel? Who am I waking up next to? What city am I living in? What am I eating for breakfast? What am I, am I working out? What am I doing that day? Who am I talking to? And take that journaling all the way tonight when you go to sleep. That's gonna help you connect to what you really, really desire and the type of person that you wanna be. When you're done doing that, I want you to read it over and see who is this person? Are you that person now? Are you doing things now that are leading you towards becoming that perfect person? Perfect person. Let me be real, there is no such thing as a perfect person, but this is your ideal person and your ideal future self, the you that you are trying to create. That's step two, I want you to connect to future you or you 2.0. Moving right along to step three. Step three is to make fear your friend. What do I mean by that? Jen, I hate fear, fear sucks. Fear does suck, but if anybody ever tells you that you need to be fearless, or you need to punch fear in the face, or you need to just get rid of fear, I want you to turn around and walk the other direction because you are a human, congratulations, as long as you are a human being and you are growing, you're going to experience fear. And fear is actually a gift in disguise. I know it's kind of like an annoying gift, it's really the gift that you don't want, that you know is good for you, but you really don't want. It tells you when you're heading in the right direction. And as long as you are growing, you're going to experience fear. So the key is not to punch fear in the face and get rid of fear. The key is to get really, really good at putting your arm around fear, making fear your friend, and walking with fear, doing the thing you're scared of with fear, there 
anyway, because fear is going to be there. So the more that you can make friends with fear and embrace the fact that fear is just there, telling you that you're headed in the right direction, because fear's job is to just keep you safe. Fear is really actually kind of nice because it's like, oh, don't do that thing. That might hurt you. So we want fear. But we know if we feel it, it means we're headed in the right path. So put your arm around fear, put fear in the passenger seat of the car and drive right towards that goal with fear there anyway. And every single time you can embrace fear and just do the thing courageously with fear there, you're gonna become a little bit more confident. That's why step number three is to make fear your friend. Because when you can do that, everything becomes a lot easier. Step four is to harness the law of action. Yes, the law of action. So you may have heard of the law of attraction. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the law of action. Because guess what? Nothing happens if nothing happens. You can think about things and you can dream about things all day long. But dreams, they're great, but they happen when you're sleeping. If you don't do, if you don't take action, if you don't go and actually do the damn thing, nothing is going to happen. And here's how action works with getting outside your comfort zone and creating more confidence. This is what I call the confidence continuum. It starts with action. And here is how action creates momentum. The beginning of absolutely any goal always starts with taking action, right? After we've seen it and we visualized it and we know what we want to do, we got to start. So you take action. But here's the thing, you're probably really scared to take action. That's why we're talking about getting outside the comfort zone and becoming more confident. That action step is really scary, but we're gonna become friends with fear. We're gonna put our arm around fear. We're gonna take fear and we're gonna take action anyway. You do that scary action step. Let's pretend that we are going live on Facebook for the very first time. And we're very, very, very scared, but we know that we need to take action. What happens? We take action, we do it, and then we get a win. Wait a minute. I got a DM from somebody that wants to work with me after that Facebook live that worked. Holy crap, you get a win. So you get serotonin, dopamine flooding your system, that when you take action and you stick with the commitment you made with yourself, it feels good. That win creates a little bit of motivation. You're a little bit more motivated to do the next one. That's how it works. You don't get motivated by sitting around trying to get yourself motivated. You get motivated by taking action and getting a win. You get the win, you take action, you get the motivation, and then that motivation turns into action again, but with a little bit more confidence this time. So you take action again with a little bit more confidence and you get a bigger win because you're a little more confident that time. Holy shit, three people just DM'd me after that Facebook Live and said they wanna work with me. Wow, now I'm gaining momentum. And what does momentum do? That gives us more confidence to take action again. And all of those little baby action steps add up. And that's what creates our future you, the life that we want. And there were so many times in my life that I just sat around and thought about things and dreamt about things and thought that I could think my way into creating things. And it wasn't until I started taking action, even with fear in the passenger seat of the car, that I started making things happen for me. That is why step four is to harness the law of action. So that, my friend, are the four steps to stepping outside of your comfort zone and creating more confidence. Let's review. Step one is to reconnect to you. Step two is to connect to the future you. Step three is to embrace fear, put your arm around them, put them in the passenger seat of the car. And step four is to harness the law of action. Now, you guys, going outside of the comfort zone is not gonna be that fun at first. It's gonna be maybe, dare I say, uncomfortable. But that's the point. Everything that you want is not inside of club comfort zone. It might feel really good in there, and we could spend a little bit of time in there, but let's start spending a little bit of time outside of Club Comfort Zone. And if you do that, and if you embrace these four steps, it'll help you do that, and then you can create everything that you want and more. I promise. And I'm here to do it with you. So let me know in the comments which step you liked the best, if it was one, two, three, or four. I cannot wait to hear how you guys take these steps to step outside your comfort zone and create everything that you want in your life. If you like this video, we got a lot more coming your way. So make sure that you click the bell, you like this video, and you subscribe to my channel so we can be besties and continue to create the life of your dreams. Let's go!